Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all your blessings. We thank you for all that you do for us. We thank you for the privilege of studying your word. And we thank you for your faithfulness. You, by your Holy Spirit, continue to reveal your Son, yourself. You continue to lead and guide us into all truth. We ask that we would receive your word with meekness. Let it be engrafted in our hearts. Let it accomplish what you send it for. We ask that you'd help us to be doers of your word. It's in Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. Amen. Coming and going. It's a phrase that we hear. It's, it's used to describe movement, activity, the hustle and bustle of an individual or a group of people as they come and go. They're, they're in the midst of doing all of their activities. And we live in a day and an age with a lot of coming and going, a lot of activity, a lot of movement. I'm sure you, like me, oftentimes, you get tired. It can almost be overwhelming sometimes, the activity, the, all of the things that are on a calendar to accomplish. And that's the title of our study, Coming and Going. As we study the life of Noah, it is a beautiful picture of God's salvation. And so, as we consider this thought of, of coming and going and all the activity of Noah, it's my hope and prayer that as we look at his life, will recognize a, a familiarity to our life, and not just to our life, but to God's work of salvation within us. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Genesis chapter 7. We're going to back up a little bit and, and look at a few verses. And while you find your place there in Genesis chapter 7, I, I want to read to you a, a verse out of Genesis chapter 1, verse 14. It says this, And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. So God placed the sun, the moon, the stars in the heavens to calculate times and season and days and months. And scholars disagree and argue over how long Noah was in the ark, what type of calendar and how many days in the calendar. And I don't want to spend our time here today uh, debating that. I, I do believe that, that Noah used what God had declared here in Genesis chapter 1 to determine days and one camp of scholars believe that Noah was in the ark 378 days. That's a long time. It's a very long time. He was in the ark over a year. But if you remember in Genesis chapter 7 verse 1, after God saw the wickedness of the earth and, and determined that he was going to destroy the earth with a flood, God looked down and saw Noah, and we studied in our first study, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And he told Noah what he was going to do, and he gave Noah a project, building project, and we looked in the next study by faith. By faith, Noah believed the Lord, and, and he began to work, and we studied all aboard where he gathered his whole family. He made it a, a family affair, and we also studied that he did all things according to God's commandment. He was obedient to do that. And in verse 1 of chapter 7 we read, And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark. For thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. The invitation was given, Come. Come into the ark. And God gave instructions concerning the animals, they all went into the ark, 
And they stayed in the ark for seven days before the rain came. And the Lord, as we studied, shut him in. God shut the door. But before he did so, there was an invitation. Come. Noah was there in the ark for seven days, and then it rained for 40 days, 40 nights. The rain came. The rain ceased, and he was in the ark for 150 days, and the ark runs aground, and then there's more time, and then Noah opens the window. He sends out the raven, and then and he sends out the dove, and he waits seven days, and it just goes on and on and on, days and days and weeks as he, he's there in the ark. And this all started, if you remember, when Noah was 600 years old. But the Lord said, come. He put out an invitation to Noah. And Noah responded to that invitation in faith and obedience. And not only did Noah respond, his family responded, and not only did he respond to that invitation, Peter tells us he was a preacher of righteousness. He proclaimed, he proclaimed that invitation. And although none but his household responded, there was an invitation given. We, we see in verse 13 of Genesis chapter 7. In the selfsame day entered Noah and Shem and Ham and Japheth, the sons of Noah, Noah's wife, and the three wives of his sons with them into the ark. They responded to that invitation. After all of that time being in the ark, after Noah relied upon the dove and was trying to discern when it was time. He was continuously waiting. He wasn't in a hurry. He didn't want to get ahead of the Lord. Then, in chapter 8 of Genesis, we read this, starting in verse 15, And God spake unto Noah, saying, Go forth of the ark. Thou and thy wife and thy sons and thy sons' wives with thee bring forth with thee every living thing that is with thee of all flesh, both of fowl and of cattle and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, that they may breed abundantly in the earth and be fruitful and multiply upon the earth. And Noah went forth and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives with him. And every beast, every creeping thing, and every fowl, and whatsoever creepeth upon the earth after their kinds went forth out of the ark. First, there was an invitation. Come. Noah responded to that invitation. After the flood and after the ark rested, after another time of waiting after that, the Lord speaks. Go forth. So we see an invitation. Come. We see what I'd like to call activation. Go forth. Bring forth. Bring, bring all with you. Come out of the ark. It's a time for a new start. A new beginning. All of those days there. Moses tells us in Psalm 90, Teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. In another place, the psalmist tells us that, that all of our days are in his hands. All of our coming and going should really be calculated and commanded by Him. All of our movement, all of our activity, if there's any hustle and bustle in our life, the coming and the going should be like Noah, under God's directive, under God's command, according to God's timetable and His calendar. But he doesn't stop there. Not only is there an invitation, come, there's an activation, go forth. There's also what I will call duplication. Look at verse 17 with me again of chapter 8. He says, bring forth with thee every living thing that is with thee of all flesh, 
both of fowl and of cattle and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, that they may breed abundantly in the earth and be fruitful and multiply upon the earth. This is the commandment that God gave Adam and Eve, be fruitful and, and multiply. He says it again in chapter 9, verse 1. If you'll look, it says, And God blessed Noah and his sons, and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth. Same chapter in verse 7. And you, be ye fruitful and multiply, bring forth abundantly in the earth. And you, be ye fruitful and multiply, bring forth abundantly in the earth, and multiply therein. There's an invitation. Come. And after all of that time, over a year, there's an activation. Go forth and bring forth with you. And while you're doing that, there should be duplication. Be fruitful. Multiply. As I said at the beginning of our study here, I believe this is a beautiful picture of God's salvation. And as we look at the historical account of God physically saving Noah and his family in a time of judgment and flood, I believe spiritually we can look at this and see application in our lives. Because if you're saved here, if you're saved today, there was an invitation given to you at some point in your life and you responded in faith. Where the Lord Jesus had come, come, come. And as we look through the Gospels, we see that. Come, come see, come follow me, come, come be with me. Matthew chapter 11. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. There's, there's an invitation given. Come. And if you've responded to that invitation then you're saved. You're experiencing the salvation of the Lord. And as He saves us, and He teaches us, He says to His disciples, to all disciples, <clears throat> follow me and I will make you fishers of men. In Matthew chapter 28, Jesus says, go make disciples. There's the go forth. There's the activation after the invitation. Go forth. Make disciples of all nations, teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you. Baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Mark chapter 16. It says, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He said, Noah, go forth and bring with you all. There should be a duplication be fruitful and multiply. Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you abide in me, you shall bear much fruit. Showing to be my disciples. Fruit that remains. That fruit comes from abiding in him. That fruit comes from being filled with the Holy Spirit. And so from the invitation to the activation to all duplication that the Lord desires as we studied in our study all aboard, what God's doing in my life, doesn't, He doesn't want it just to stop with me. He wants it to go beyond me. All of our coming and going should be of the Lord. And it really is that same cycle. Come, go, be fruitful, be multi they multiply. Come, go, be fruitful, and multiply. That's the process. There's, that's that beautiful picture of, of, of God's salvation, where we see His salvation working in the life of a person, and then He gives them the commission to go forth, and then He gives them purpose to be fruitful, to multiply. All of our coming and going, all of our activity, all of our movement, really should be under the inspiration, under the command of the Lord. All of our times, all of our days, all those days that Noah was there in the ark, he was doing so under God's directive. And we read and see it, a beautiful picture of salvation in the Lord. 
desires that my life, from the very invitation, He desires it to be a beautiful picture of His saving grace. All my coming and going. Because we read in the Bible that Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and the end. He's the first and the last. In Hebrews, we're told to look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. No, we, you and I, won't be building an ark. But we've been given an invitation just like Noah. And I hope, I hope and pray that you've responded. I have. And not only have I received that invitation, I've received the activation, the Great Commission, go. And it's my prayer and desire to have duplication in my life that others will hear God's Word, God's grace, His Gospel, the invitation. And they too will respond. <clears throat> and so that cycle will continue to repeat itself over and over again. And it should be all of our desires that as that cycle repeats itself in my life and your life and all of our lives, that in eternity we'd be able to look back at all of our coming and going and see a beautiful picture of God's salvation in the lives of His people. Let's pray. Father, we thank You so much for Your grace. We thank you for your invitation to come to you in Christ, to respond in faith and believe and be saved. We thank you for your activation, your great commission, sending us forth into all the world, that you would choose to use your people to reach others. We would ask Make us fruitful. Help us to multiply. Make us fishers of men. Help us to duplicate. Let us, Lord, with the talent that you've given us, help us to return to you, having increased that. And to hear you say, well done. Let all of our coming and going be ordained of you from start to finish, be our beginning and our end. We look to you, the author and finisher of our faith. In Jesus' name, amen.